We're down here in Springfield, Massachusetts at the Grinspoon Foundation Entrepreneurship Conference. My name is Parker Burr and I'm the founder of Feedstocks. The biggest thing that I've learned over the years is that you don't have to be an expert at anything to start building something great. He cares about finding customers and providing them with what they want and what they need. And that's probably the key to his success. So without further ado, let's hear it. Parker Burr. I want to take you back to the really early days of how I got the first idea and how I went from this idea to actually selling something. Um, when I talk to young entrepreneurs now, they say, you know, they're like looking for that big answer. They're like, how do I get to, to the next level? And, and for me, I just want to tell a story of there is no secret. Um, so for me, in the early days, I didn't know I was an entrepreneur. I was in high school and I was tasked with getting uniforms for my lacrosse team. And I got this crazy idea that I could make cooler uniforms than Nike and Under Armour. I have no idea why I thought I could do that. And so I was like, I'm a lacrosse player. I can make uniforms and, and apparel for people like me because I know what they like. And I go to Lids in the mall, and I make my first hat. And it says promo lacrosse, like promote lacrosse, because that's what I knew and loved. Um, so I would go to Lids, I'd make a hat for $18, and then I'd go to high school, and I'd sell them in the hallway for $20. And I was striking it rich, because I was making $2 with every hat I sold. And I sold a ton of them. Every one of my friends wanted them. Um, and that was really just the beginning. So then I go off to UMass, and this is where it really starts taking off. I walk to the club lacrosse team, I join the team, and so the captain of the team heard I had a lacrosse uniform company, which wasn't true. I just went to Lids and made hats that said my name on it. And he says, Parker, can you make our uniforms? So I quickly do the math in my head, and I'm like, I think he's going to pay me three to $5,000. I can absolutely make your uniforms. So I get, somehow I bill the school, and they send a check to my dorm room, which was all sorts of messed up. And then I wired all this money to China. And a couple weeks later, uniform showed up. And I was like, I'm in business. I have a uniform company. And they were kind of maroon. Maroon's like one of the hardest colors. But they were kind of maroon, and it worked. I was just off and running. And, I went on that spring to sell $80,000 of uniforms out of my dorm room. And I remember calling my dad sitting here. I remember calling him, Dad, I think I have a business. And I can only imagine what he thought I was selling at the time. I said, Dad, I think I have a business. And he's like, that's great. How much are you doing? I said, $80,000. He said, have you registered with the state? And I was like, registered for what? And I was just off and running. It didn't matter. It was like, just, just move fast, break things, and fix them later. And so he got me set up. I was in business. So I wire all my money to China, I have this uniform business, I'm pumped. All of a sudden, I'm growing like crazy. I do two, three times biz, uh, my revenue year over year. I'm doing $500,000 a year. I'm in college, I'm going to class, I'm making money, I'm pumped. I'm like, how can I get better than this? But as I look back now, I remember some of the guesswork that I was doing to find my way. Uh, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to make uniforms. But for some reason, I could always find the customer to sell them to. I mean, I was shipping direct to the customer, revealing my source, which is a big no-no. I had no idea what import taxes were, so they just piled up, and all of a sudden, I had to pay a ton of money to those guys. I got my first office, which was 200 square feet. I thought I was going to go broke, uh, paying like $200 a month. I thought I was going to lose everything. It was 200 square feet. I probably could have used 2,000. Um, when big shipments came in, we took up the whole hallway. Our boxes, it was like a communal workspace behind College Pizza at UMass. We took up the whole hallway with all of our boxes, and we're like, we swear we'll be done by the end of the day, we'll be out of your hair to all of our neighbors. Then I ran into a customer, and they said, great, you're making our uniforms, I want socks. So the same situation, I'm like, I think this guy's gonna pay me, so of course I can make socks. About the same time, I won a pitch competition in Bob Lowry's class, and he gave me $300. And simultaneously, the Grinspoon Foundation gave me $1,000. Oh, I forgot I had the slideshow. So these are the hats. <laughs> so that's the office. That's a 200 square foot office. That piece of equipment at the top, the top right kind of, is the piece of equipment that I, that I bought with Bob Lowry and the Grinspoon Foundation's um, scholarship. And that's what printed the first pair of socks, which is really cool. I remember printing them late at night. It was probably a Friday. And I'm just printing these socks. I'm like, this is crazy. So I make all these custom socks. I send them out to the customer. I'm pumped. I'm like, now I have a lacrosse uniform business and a sock business. This is great. And a week later, they all called me, all these customers, and said, hey, socks were great, man. We loved them. I was like, sweet. I did it. And they say, but they all turned white again. All the prints washed out. And I said, that's not, that's not possible. I saw them. And you know, I quickly learned you can't print on certain materials. Their socks were white, and I ended up losing a lot of money on that deal. But I was still off and running. It didn't matter. I can make socks now. I figured it out. I pivoted and learned and made better socks. So my senior year, 
I walk into JT's class, and there's this kid sitting in the front of the room, and he's bragging about how he made $20,000 making t-shirts. So I go up to him, and I'm like, this kid is so annoying. And I'm like, that's cool, man. I, I've sold $1.2 million over the past couple of years. And quickly, everyone stopped talking to him and started talking to me. And as it turns out, I, loved, I ended up loving this kid. He is now my business partner. His name is Taylor. He's awesome. He's way more in your face than me. It was just interesting to see how we were coming from two similar paths, but it was just because I had done something, he got an interest in what I was doing and wanted to join. So I said to him, I think I'm going to make socks. He got interested. He came down to the warehouse, printed up a bunch of socks, and we went and hit campus. And this is really the humble beginnings. We hit campus and we were selling socks on campus to college kids outside of a dining hall, which doesn't make any sense. Like, who goes, gets lunch, and buys socks? Everyone did it. That's the answer is everyone did it. We sold them to everybody and we were making a killing. Taylor turns around and he was hooked. He had the biggest grin on his face and said, I want to go into business with you. The last day of class that semester, we became business partners, which is just a freakish timing thing. It was the, I met him on the first day, last day of class, we became business partners. So Taylor and I don't go into business together and we would walk around campus with our jackets filled with socks, always. We were always promoting and always selling on campus. And he bumped into an advisor in the UMass network. The advisor took an interest in us. He just wanted to help us any way he could. It didn't matter. Um, so he was wearing our socks. The same advisor was wearing our socks in the gym one day. And he, because they're so bright and in your face, someone else in the gym recognized them. Turns out this guy's an angel investor in Western Massachusetts. A couple weeks later, he gave us a check for $250,000. Just completely serendipitous, that's my favorite word. Um, so after we got $250,000, we decided what else could we do besides go and make more money? We did a Kickstarter, we launched Kickstarter and went down that path, just pivoting all along the way trying to learn and grow. Um, so then we then I graduate college, we're off and running, we have the investment, we did the Kickstarter. Fall 15, fall of 2015, I get an email and I basically brush it off. I thought it was like a business service trying to sell me, which happens a lot. So I brush it off, say, hey, Taylor, can you look into this? It turns out this guy was David Falk, Michael Jordan's agent. And he wanted to invest and advise with feet socks and he loved what we were doing. And I almost missed the email. So we, went, so we went to the north end of Boston, met the guy. We had nothing, no pitch deck, no financials, no nothing. We said, Here's our story, this is where we think we're going. And he bought in, he loved us. He's now an active investor and advisor in our company. And he's taken us down this path now where we're pursuing influencers, people with huge followings, whether they be athletes, uh, social media stars, people like Ali Raisman, who he connected us to, who's an Olympic gold medalist, a gymnast. We have a huge deal with her, and she's taken us really to that next level through her network. Um, she's been amazing to work with. But if it wasn't for meeting David Falk and almost missing that email, we never, never would have gotten to her. So all these things kind of build up. So then I go on, we have Ali Raisman, we're off and running, it's spring of this year. So this is how quickly it's happened over the last you know, nine months or so. Spring of 16, I get contacted, I get an email from, um, or I get a phone call from San Francisco. So of course I pick up, I'm like, maybe this is Mark Zuckerberg. And it wasn't Mark Zuckerberg, but it was this lady that found us on Kickstarter and watched us for the past, um, past year or so. And she said, hey, do you need more money? And I said, as a matter of fact, I do, because I'm out of money. And She's like, well, I'm an angel investor. So we fly out and meet her. And again, we find ourselves with no financials, no nothing, maybe a pair of socks, our hand, our smile, and anything that can come out of our mouths. And she loved us. She bought into it. We just sold our passion, our drive, everything that we've done. It's very untraditional the way we raise money. Most people go in with a formal pitch deck and financials. We had nothing. She loved us. They offered us a million dollars at a $5 million valuation on the spot. That's the most money by far I've ever heard of <laughs> or ever seen. And, and we look at each other and we say, no. We said no, which is crazy. I, turning down a mil oh, this lady is ready to give us a million dollars. And we said, no, because we decided we want to raise it at a $10 million valuation. And, and we stood by that. We had, for some reason, we had the confidence to do that. Um, this lady is now uh, invested. She's like, we're signing papers right now because that's probably why Scott Foster's not here. Um, is he here? Good. So he's probably, he's, we're, we're closing that deal this week. It's a million dollars, which is crazy. It's going to take our business to the next level. Um, the important thing is they bought into who we are, where we think we're going. We didn't sell ourselves as anything we weren't. We're now a team of 10, 
growing. We're out in Los Angeles. We're headquartered in Los Angeles. We moved our entire company across the country to, to put ourselves in situations where we might bump into influencers, which is just a crazy thought. We produce 100,000 pairs of socks at a time. We just outgrew our first lease in LA just two months into the lease. We had our best month ever last month with $100,000 in online sales, but we're, we already did $100,000 this week. The company is just skyrocketing through this influencer, and it's just it's crazy to think how you go from a hat to selling $200,000 of socks in a month. So we're on pace to do two to three million next year, excluding any large retail deals that just kind of put you through the roof. So now we have, we have wool socks, athletic socks, dress socks, casual socks. We make 90% of everything in the States. We own four actual sock machines, which I never thought I'd be so excited to own a machine that makes socks. We're frequently in our manufacturing facility with our hands figuring out how to make socks. We're just now becoming true sock people and sock experts, which is really interesting, just now after we've sold so many. But in short, all of this has taught me that you don't have to know everything or pretend to be an expert at anything in order to start building something great. If I had waited until I felt like I am a sock expert, I'm going, I never would have been able to, to get to where I am. I wouldn't fall into those crazy situations where David Falk wants to invest in me, where this lady in San Francisco wants to give us a million dollars. I just started, and that's the important thing. So I knew nothing when I sold my first hat. I knew nothing when I wired my money to China and hoped for uniforms. I knew nothing when I asked a stranger for a million dollars. So what I'm trying to say is that I encourage everyone here to just work hard, do something, throw yourself into every situation possible, possible, and just let serendipity take over. I think that's shorter than 15 minutes, but that's my whole thing. I think we're diving into a Q&A. So. Parker, thank you. We have time for questions. So I've got two people with mics walking around. So raise your hand if you want to ask Parker some questions. What makes your socks different than anybody else's socks? So we get this a lot. Everybody says, everybody's making crazy socks. And for us, we design really cool socks. We make really great socks. There's a lot of people doing that. For us, it's just our really unique approach. There's, there's the Nikes and under, Under Armors of the world, but those guys cannot move across the country, move into a building filled with social influencers so that we can then work with them. We, it's really just our approach. Our socks are visually different. They're super nice, comfortable socks. We make a ton in the US, that's great. But for us, it's just our approach. We're just out there grinding. We're doing everything we can to sell socks. Um, you know, we move a business across the country to align with people that we think will help us. So uh, I remember the, one of the first things you mentioned was that your, when, you told, when you told your dad about your business first, he asked if you had registered. Mm -hmm. And obviously you had started selling your product before registering. You'd start uh, your business before registering as opposed to the other way around. So how would you recommend handling that situation? When is it best to register? When is it best to start? selling your product, because you obviously have to mm. get started somehow. Uh, are you with the IRS? <laughs> <laughs> you caught me. Okay. I'm undercover. I, I would just say seek, seek someone in your network that can give you better advice on that than me. You know, I sold a ton of product before I was in business. Um, I'm the wrong person to give you advice on that. There's people that, that's their career to give you advice on that, so I just reach out to those people. Um, but, I mean, to sell one pair of socks, you don't have to be in, you don't have to be in business, you know? Sorry if that's a lame answer. <laughs> Hi, um, my name is Gabby. I'm a junior at Elms College. I'm majoring in business management and marketing, and I want to work for you. Are you hiring? What do you like to do? I like to meet people. I like to plan events. I like to spread the word about companies everywhere and sell stuff. That too. Feel, Thank how, you. How do you feel about Southern California? Um, my mom lives in Sacramento. So go to feetsocks.com, contact us on the contact form, and we'll reach out to you. All right, great. Thank you Always so much. Always hiring. We need salespeople. Great. Hi. <laughs> my name is John. Uh, one question I have for you is what's one piece of advice you'd give to a startup or to a product that's coming out? Just in general. It Just seems in general, great, yeah. I'll, I'll roll with it. Um, my piece of advice is what I tried to say, but I went off script, was just go out and sell something. 
Like everybody is always looking for the playbook of how do I get from zero to $100 million, it doesn't matter. Like sell your first hat to your brother, sell your first hat to someone, you know, get someone to download your app or whatever it is. Um, don't be afraid of those humble beginnings because those are the best. Like I still consider us in the humble beginnings, but this really is the best. Like this is the center of Amherst. We're selling socks on the side of the street. I think that was a bus stop. You know, like it didn't matter. To me, that was the most exciting times. I think a lot of people want that glamorous um, Snapchat, Facebook approach where it's just huge and you have crazy offices, catered lunches, but like just slow down, just sell your first thing and then worry about selling two of them and just keep going with it. Does that help? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. What Hi. do you see like future plans for expansion wise, international growth? Do you see any like expansion outside of the U.S.? Sure. Um, not much beyond the U.S. We have to dominate the U.S. first. So we're looking at the market leader. There's one in this industry and I won't say their name, but they're doing about 20 million pairs of socks a year, just socks. So I have a lot of socks to sell in the U.S. to catch up to those guys before I need to go abroad. I want to master one market first. I want every one of you here to know what Feet Socks is. Once that happens, you know, we'll be looking at the next frontier. But for me now, I don't know what that is. So it sounds like you grew very quickly. Can you just talk about how you took the approach to manage that growth so it didn't take off and you couldn't control it? Um, I think the way I told the story makes it sound like I grew really quick, quickly, but I started doing this when I was 18. I'm 23. It's been five years, um, which is a long time to me. Um, so it was, it was just, it was, I go back to that hat example of sell one, sell two, sell four, and it was just um, very manageable in, in that regard. But for the hyper growth that we're experiencing now, going from $1,000 a month online to 100 month over month, 100,000 online, that's crazy growth. We sell socks that we don't have right now. So we're, we're figuring out as we go, like, you know, I still don't have plans for the next six months because I just can't. Our biggest advantage right now is being small and being able to pivot. Um, so with that, it's, it's, it's tough to manage. You know, like we're selling socks on our site because we have the pictures, but we don't even have socks to, to fulfill yet. And then we just manage those emails and say they're coming soon. You know, like this is not recommended, but this is just what we have to do because when you sell that many socks that quickly, you, you know what I mean? You have to have the product. It takes a lot of planning. So we're still figuring it out. We still don't know. Right over here. Hi. So I was just wondering if we're all getting free socks today. Yeah. So if you go to feetsocks.com, you can buy any socks you want um, for the holidays, for your family and friends. No free socks, though. It's like, it's like Elon Musk. He, he pays for his own Teslas. I knew that was the question. One more question. Yeah. So I was just interested, like, if you have done any market statistics on you uh, or, or you have done some market research that how much market you have captured already or how much is the potential in your company? Was it, I didn't quite understand your question, but was it in terms of market penetration, like how much we've, we've captured? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so how much is the total market and the, your target market is how much you are already making out of that market, like how much is the percentage of total market and you have targeting which, which segment and how much is the potential mm -hmm. in that total? So I don't, I don't know the full market size. I know that, I know a couple of the leaders. I know that Nike sells $3.3 .3 billion of, of socks a year. I know that um, Stance, the leaders, there I said it. I didn't want to, but I said it. The <laughs> leaders of the market, um, Stance, who is in this little niche, like high-end sock market, um, like I said, they sold 20 million pairs a year. By comparison, you know, in the next 365, maybe we'll do a half million pairs. So I know that I couldn't even say I have 1%. I know I have fractions of a percent, um, but that doesn't matter. It's, I'm not worried about the other guys. I'm worried about us. You know, I just want to grow. I want to go from 3 million to 10 million to 100 million. You know, I'm watching those other guys and I'm, and, and I'm aware of them, but I'm not sure about the percentages. And I've never been a numbers guy. One more question over here. Hi, Paul. Hey, Parker. Happy day. So proud to see you there kicking butt. So um, we've heard a lot of the awesome part, but you know so well that there are some incredible lows in being an entrepreneur. And I was just wondering if you could help everyone know about 
a low time and how you got through it because they're all going to hit it and it's good to know because if they don't know anybody just yeah. it's, it's all roses right man yeah it's so easy to paint the rosy picture but I, there's two examples i gotta tell them both because they're so good if i have time they'll, they'll be quick but one of them it was when i was making lacrosse uniforms i'll never forget this was so crazy I, my uniforms were coming in from china or pakistan at the time and it was on a deadline everything's on a deadline in that business and I get a call from DHL, the company shipping them, and they say, hey, the plane had to make an emergency landing in Moscow, Russia. And I was like, so when do I get my uniforms? And she said, well, we can't get visas to get mechanics in. We can't get visas to get the product off the plane. We can't get visas to do anything. So I said, so when do I get my uniforms? And she said, they're pretty much gone. And it was, it was somewhere between, I think I blacked it out because it was so tragic at the time, but it was, in excess of $10,000 of uniforms, which at the top, like $10,000 to this day is so much money to just, just like that up and poof and light on fire. It was $10,000. But the, the coolest part about this story was I remember getting a call from that customer saying, every swear in the world, how are you in business, this and that, I'm going to sue you. And I remember somehow, I didn't even know how I knew to do this, but I stayed calm through it and I said, I said Joel, don't worry, man, I got your back. And I remade the uniforms on my dollar and he buys for me every single season for the past six years. So I've made my money back on it, which is great. It was a crazy story that uh, you know, landed in Moscow, Russia. The only second one, and I'll go quick, is that um, I had on the same customer. I don't know how he's still with me. The same customer. His uniforms were coming in, and his shorts were two inches too long. Two inches cost me like $5,000. I had to have them remade from scratch over two inches on shorts. You know how big two inches is? That's what $5,000 looks like in this case. And it was that same customer, but I had his back again. And it was just really cool to see, you know, if you have someone's back like that, if you have a customer's back, they keep coming back. I think that's it. Uh, first, thank you to Mr. Grinspoon for rolling up my pants and making sure I wore two different socks. And, and for the conference, this is really amazing, so thank you. For this year's holiday gifts, you guys know where to go, feetslacks.com. Everything for kids, women, men, doesn't matter, we got it.